Hey guys, welcome to week 8 of the builds. This week we're going to be preparing the hull for painting. We have to start by glassing the bottom and for that we need to prepare this, make the round so the glass cloth can come one inch to the side panels over a round, not the sharp edge. We can then start preparing the sides, see if there's any curing that needs to be done. But it looks alright so far, not much to be done, just maybe a bit of sanding. There's a lot to do before I can paint the boat, but let's see what we can do this week. Right, many of these holes are already filled with epoxy that run out from them, or run down in this case, from the fillets, but some others didn't. So I want to fill these ones. I'm just gonna drop a blob of epoxy there. No putty or fillers or anything. I've used the syringe with just epoxy, but you can mix a bit of um, microspheres with epoxy and use those same dispensing ba bags that I use for filleting and just put a blob on each of the screw holes. Uh, to be honest, I don't think that's that important. The glass will go over that anyway. Just a blob of epoxy, some will be absorbed by the plywood, whatever it's not, you just sand it down and then lay the glass on top. Okay guys, now I need to round this off. I will start with the chamfer, uh, 45 degrees up to the last layer of the plywood, so I can then round it off to the side. You can see the chamfer now. Just didn't touch the last layer of plywood. Now I'll use the sander to round this. If we are using the filleting method, this edge here has to be rounded because you need a tape here as well on the transom. This here should be ideally a sharp edge, but I don't think you can form the cloth around the sharp edge. So that's a smaller radius round than in here. But since we can have a sharp edge here because of the cloth, well, maybe I can find a solution later. If not, well, it's not like I'm gonna race this ball, is it? Okay, I've removed all the dust, or as much as I could, and it's now time to put the glass cloth over the bottom. Okay guys, a bit of a setback. My tripod fell and... snapped. Mm, now I don't have a tripod. Uh, this is gonna be awkward. Now I need to cut a portion of this to match the other one and come all the way to the tail. Okay, so that's the cloth cut. This is not meant to overlap. And I've super glued my tripod. Put some super glue, then some microfibers, and well, it will hold for now, I guess. I have to be really careful. I actually put a tether from the camera to the top of the tripod, just in case that hinge breaks again. I don't want the camera going on the floor, because I was really lucky. He hit the floor with the frame just around the lens. <sighs> anyway. We'll, get, we'll keep going tomorrow. Okay guys, ready to spread the first batch of epoxy. 
I've made a slightly larger squeegee because mines are way too small. That's 200 grams of epoxy. That's 80 gram cloth. Okay, I spread 200 grams of epoxy there and for some reason the camera shut down so I've got no footage but here goes another 400 As you can see, I've spread all the epoxy and then removed the excess with the squeegee. It's not a very good squeegee, that thing is not that straight, it's a bit of plywood. But, uh, so you shouldn't have many really shiny areas on the cloth, you should still be able to see the weave. And now I'm going to grab a brush and do these sides. I have removed the edge of the tape because those threads are really hard and it will be very difficult to sand later on. So I just cut those, the first threads, it's like loops on the end of the tape. Okay, first coat done. Now I need to go have lunch and then come for the second because this is just about right actually. Yeah. Clean but sticky. Perfect. Okay, and here we go again. Now I'm going to drag the roller so it will break all the tiny bubbles that he made earlier on. Someone gave me a tip about cutting a slot in there. I never remember that until I'm like halfway through this. <laughs> That's what the bottom should look like when you apply the last coat. You cannot see the weave. And by the way, that's seven kilos of epoxy gone and then some, of course I already used a little bit from my uh, spare kit I had here in the workshop. So I think I might have to go and buy another kilo or so, so I can make the spars and the foils. 
we'll see. Guys, I'm sorry if I didn't explain much of what I was doing in this video, but I am not too comfortable with glassing. I was trying to concentrate, see if I didn't screw up that much. <laughs> but as you could see, when starting, uh, it pays off to spend a bit of time putting, laying the, the cloth down properly with no um, wrinkles or anything. Spend some time there. That will save you a lot of um, trouble once you start putting the epoxy. There will be less bubbles and it will be a lot easier to run the squeegee. When you do that, start the middle of the cloth towards the, the ends. Also, I haven't opened the center case slot yet, as you can see there. I haven't got my router yet, um, so I'll just wait and open it later. Okay, I've got 1.1 kilo of resin left. That should be enough for the foils. Um, let's see how it goes. Oh, I still have to do the, the decks. Oh boy, um, never mind. Now, let's do some quick math. People sometimes, I hear them say, oh, go lighter on the plywood and then glass it. Uh, is that really a good option? Well, if you use a five millimeter plywood sheet, like I did, that's gonna cost, or cost me 35 euros. If I could source the six millimeters locally, that would be five ply or five layers plywood. Uh, and that would only be 46. So that's a difference of 11 euros. But I spent 46 euros on glass and almost one and a half kilos of epoxy. So that's another 40, kilo, 40 euros. So basically using a five millimeter sheet instead of a six millimeter, it actually cost me an extra 80 euros or 90 euros. So you won't save anything. It will be twice or three times the price. The bottom won't be as good as it was um, six millimeter plywood. And what do you save in weight? What, maybe half a kilo or a pound? Because the difference between a six and a five millimeter sheet is maybe two and a half kilos. I added roughly two kilos with cloth and epoxy. So it's not really worth it, guys. If you can get six millimeters bottom five plies, go for it. Okay, this is now dry. And as you can see, pretty much all covered, apart from a couple of patches where I can still see the, the weave. But never mind. I'll sand this down and then fair it and it should be okay. Starting by the those seams there. Okay, so this is not stable enough on top of the sawhorses, so I'm gonna use this, well, thing that I made for my um, goat island skiff, so I could wheel it out to the garden. That's a bit easier than the, the scraper, just to get rid of the biggest lumps before I can put the sander in here. Because otherwise, the sander's base is soft and it's gonna mold around these, these um, lumps and it will be sanding the lumps and the area adjacent to it. So you will always have a dip and a, and a lump, unless you have the, the belt sander. That could work because it's a metal base but I only have a very coarse sandpaper for that. And if I use it, I might end up going to the plywood. Okay, here I'm not trying to get rid of all the gloss. Uh, I'm just trying to get rid of the border between the tape uh, and the plywood that all that shiny stuff I will later on just use a scotch bright pad this is only 80 gram um, cloth so I don't want to risk uh, actually going to the cloth itself um, so yes just the border Oh, 
Okay, I'm gonna need some putty here and some of these holes. Guys, this is that time when you can spend one or two days preparing for painting or you can spend two or three weeks. <laughs> it's up to you guys. It all depends how long you want to spend here in the workshop or how soon you want to get in the water or on the water or whatever. Something water. <laughs> Okay, 120 grit, and I'm going to start sanding the bottom. Anyway, change the plunge, got 80 grit now. When doing this be careful you don't sand all the way to the pot this is just light sanding just to make it straight I don't think I'm gonna do any fairing on this to be honest now that I finished sanding I'm just going to buy some scotch bright pads and get rid of all these little dots they are still kind of glossy especially just here in this area because the rest of the hole is all right and then i'm going straight straight to a primer i don't know how i'm gonna paint the bolt yet but one thing i know for sure all this here will take primer and the first coat of white Okay, another week has gone past and things didn't go according to plan, but no harm done. Uh, I'll just put a couple more hours next week to compensate for it. And until then guys, stay safe. See you soon.